<laughs> that was that was an ending. <laughs> yeah. I love the, the the post the post play retune. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just going to retune it yeah. to somewhere where it should have been, yeah. <laughs> yeah. only to completely detune it again yeah, yeah. <laughs> immediately on play. Yeah, <laughs> that's some cool stuff in there. I mean, yeah. we, we've we've played a lot together over the years, just sure. in, in loads of context and, and loads of uh, although it's often trio. Yeah, right. Noise upstairs context, yeah. and or, also when we work with Simon, yeah, yeah, like and Nick, and <laughs> yeah, 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 lots of different combos. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't done too much just straight duo stuff, which is kind of a, an interesting. I think this is the first time we've done a string duo, probably. Yeah, yeah. Potentially, oh, um, yeah. maybe. I mean, it seems statistically unlikely, but, yeah. <laughs> but the, the evidence does point towards that. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is kind of cool, particularly like this acoustic electric. It's um, nice, divide. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I guess with the banjo or this sort of like tabletop or laptop kind of feel, like, I guess there's a lot of percussive, percussive elements there. Mm, Do you think mm. that's something that I, I guess for you is intrinsic to the instrument or intrinsic to the role in a duo? Like, what, what's the... Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Because I found it's quite recent in the last like two years that I've sort of started playing banjo. It was just like, you know, that sort of lockdown impulse where like mm. lockdown happened and it was like, I know. I'll buy a, a new instrument and like have a bit of a play around with that. Uh, I guess there's always been like that element of it of like a very really percussive thing in like my electric mm. and acoustic guitar playing, like you know, putting things on the pickups to make sounds and like muting with the left hand heavily and using objects to like get that sort of percussive thing going. Mm. So it totally made sense when I got the banjo. It's like there's like yeah. a drum with strings on it. This is like, this is what I've been dreaming of playing all along. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think definitely in that, that opening, that like maybe the first minute or two where I was using the comb, there was, like, mm. there, there was that sort of thing, like those sort of things where it's like, yeah, it's just, it's really, that's like kind of percussion focused and looking yeah, yeah. at textures and how like the skin and the metal comes, comes up from it. Mm. And I think it also comes back, and it was interesting because we were talking about Phil Marks before, mm. I think because I spent like a year or two playing a lot of duo with Phil um, at, at his house when I was getting really, you know, interested in mm. playing really improvised stuff. So I think there's that thing of like being a guitar player as well. There's that really nice, it's easy to play with percussionists because you've got that sort of like push and pull sort of rhythm thing going mm. on. Um, but yeah, so there was like little bits when I was playing when I was like, had this sort of like image of Phil sort of like, <laughs> around the kit, you know, sort of with that, that sort of scat shot. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like missing beats and like adding beats and playing impossible beats. So mm. in that first little bit, I was like, yeah, okay. Like feeling that, that connection to yeah, him yeah. and like you say, to like percussion stuff. So. And, and, and there's an interesting thing with like, like laptop or tabletop or guitar percussion type things where there's some aspect of that, that Marxian yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, sort of yeah. uh, uh, inconsistent rhythm. Exactly. Like where yeah. you're, you're going to get a rhythm. Because like with guitar, or particularly once you start medicine with tuning, you can obviously get uh, pitches that you weren't expecting. Yeah. You change the tuning a bit, you bend the note. Oh, that's a pitch that I wasn't expecting. Mm, but often mm. when you do a sound at a certain time, typically you hear a sound at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when yeah. you have kind of either objects or, or uh, a cacophony of objects or movements, that can start to fall apart and you have a uh, gesture that's surplus to the sound being produced mm. in a way that is interesting in that you can get some accidental sounds, which obviously are surprising when they happen, but also accidental sounds in the timbre. Because like yeah. like there's an like if you if you hit the drum with your comb, that that it sounds intentional. There's yeah. like a sound to that. Whereas like yeah. if you're moving about and your comb hits the drum, there's a different sound to that, yeah, which I think yeah, Phil is yeah. really good at bringing out of the drum set, yeah, because he plays in this sort of superfluous area where there's yeah. like gesture that's um, 
yeah, surplus yeah. to requirement, you know? Yeah, 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 But, but yeah. The, that, that amount of movement and that amount of gesture produces a, a kind of sound that ends up being unique. It almost reminds me of, like, Cajun things of, like, the, like, you know, arbitrary sounds, arbitrary, you mm. know, pitches, but like, because they, they have this element of surprise in, in obviously, time and, and space, but also the, the sort of the quality of the sound. Mm. Like, if I intended to hit the string, like... Like there's a sound to that that's different than like if I uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we? Uh, no, I can I can return that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can edit. We can edit that one out. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a <laughs> yeah. like an, an accidental kind of thing to it, like where the the moment happens and like that. Yeah. It, it sounds kind of different. And know? it's sort of trying to create those conditions as well, where you're like you're in control. You're in control to an to a point but you're mm. also like fold, trying to fold in things yeah yeah yeah, yeah where you're you're sort of th there's that sort of like teetering edge thing to it like mm. i play a lot with my eyes closed yeah yeah as is obvious from <laughs> anyone watching this i'm like <laughs> sort of shut eye so then there is that thing of like gesture and feel and like you know from playing the instrument where certain things are going to be happening but there mm. is that element of you where you're like i mean it's, it's a really typical thing I, I think for a lot of improvisers as well where you'll be you'll be in that point of of flow and you, you you've found like a particular sound and mm. like you say you you would have found a timbre or like a really specific thing that is like really singing all of a sudden mm -hmm. and then you're like focusing on the singing focusing on whatever it is that's singing and like a typical thing for me will then to be like i'm going to open my eyes and like just check what's going on right. this is so sick like i want to be able to do it again mm. and then you open your eyes and look and yeah, it yeah. spills, it like <laughs> runs away as you, like you've shifted your focus or your attention or like there's something in your musculature that's like changed because you're suddenly focusing on it rather than mm. more relaxed letting it unfold. Hmm. And then it sort of runs, it spills away, but then it's those things where like, yeah, it's kind of the fail, but then like from that fail, you're then into some other yeah, yeah, territory yeah. again where you're like, okay, well, where's this, this traveling to? Hmm. Um, Let me ask you yeah. with that, because uh, like oh, this is different here because you're playing an acoustic instrument that's yeah. inches from you and, and there's an electric instrument coming from the other side of the room. But if you're in a context where it's either double electric guitar and yeah. coming out of like maybe similar space, not the same mm. amp, but like over there, do you find that sometimes the, whether it's you or somebody else, sounds can get blurry in the sort of flow Yeah, thing? definitely, yeah. I mean, I think that's like, yeah, that that's like a, classic experience I guess within like the the, the realm of free improvising yeah. isn't it where you're like it, it's not you have to stop doing things to mm. check if it's you or if it's <laughs> yeah. someone else like yeah. I know there's we've had we've done a few gigs this like year or two with this really nice quintet with like me Richard Harrison and percussion TF Drenching mm. and Lawrence Dunn mm -hmm. prepared piano and Michael Parrott on clarinet and saxophones mm. and that group has that really nice quality mm. and the gigs have always been in St Margaret's Church there's quite a nice acoustic and yeah, yeah. we can be near to each other but yeah always afterwards there's bits where people are like yeah I had to stop playing because <laughs> I wasn't sure like if that tone was like me doing this or like yeah. you doing that so that that sense of like folding in yeah particularly with with electric guitar as well mm. where there's like so many possible timbres and places yeah you can you can go and yeah with acoustics it's kind of different because you can often feel physically what's or the proximity is yeah. such that like it's it's that sound is right there and it's a little easier to sort of pinpoint it but i i find it with electric and also when i do uh, electronics full-blown because mm. then the source is super obscure so like if, if yeah. two people were doing electronics and there's a pa over there it's like uh it's, it's very hard to tell who's doing what yeah um and and the way that one relates to gesture and movement can can be impacted by that yeah um sometimes for me i find it to be with electronics so if i'm using electronics specifically um it can make things a little not worse but like it's not a, a great feeling that like mm. it's hard to parse out particularly with like a kind of like active gestural language um if if you think the sound was you but it wasn't you but you've now been doing some other like bollocks or something and so like <laughs> it's like oh damn that that that, that wasn't me or something like in, in a context like this it's a little like there's like this one high-pitched sound and we're like oh was that you or was that me it's yeah like, but like like we kind of hear it and it's there and it's cool yeah yeah you know yeah, where, yeah. where it's a little different where i was like i was doing this thing but it turns out like yeah my my, my fader was down but I, I i was doing it was some unrelated thing that was happening you know <laughs> yeah um but yeah yeah i think that's a yeah i think i probably feel that more as a, from an audience perspective i think because i think yeah i really that the aspect of that the physicality mm. and the gesture of watching improvisers and music music in general i think that's 
I, I enjoy it so much as, as a, a, a seeing that, mm. seeing that sort of stuff. And like, say with, with a performer like Phil, where you're saying, well, there's that sort of self editing where you're like, mm. there's this sort of gestural thing where you're not hearing, you know, out of five strikes <laughs> at the kit, you're only hearing one. So it's like every possible like strikers presented to you like in mm. real time and you get to see them, but yeah, you don't yeah. hear them. So I think, yes, yeah, as, as a, as an audience member, I think I probably find those like sort of schizophrenia things a little mm. bit more like, oh, where you're <laughs> like, I mean, it's just a classic sort of laptop thing sometimes, isn't it? Where you're like, you can see someone's really busy, but like yeah, yeah. the relation, you're sort of like, I really want to like, you know, know something more about or like see a little bit of the screen or, mm. or something to have that like, yeah, that legibility sort of is, is is a tricky one when, when it comes to electronics. Mm. Um, and and it's, it's a big concern in, in that domain, particularly yeah. people who have like laptop screen up and playing that way. Like yeah, often when yeah, I play, yeah. I'm using a controller or something else, but like the, yeah, making yeah. legible your your gesture, but also your intention. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we had an interesting one. Like the last Curious Ear show we did, Lee Patterson mm. performed this absolutely amazing set, the mm -hmm. solo set. And again, afterwards, I was like, yeah, so like the one bit where you were playing back like a field recording of birds before you brought that huge drone in. And he was like, no, no, there was like there was no field recording. In that. <laughs> that would have been like, uh, you know, like a, 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 a hydrophone yeah, or something yeah. on a, you know, something bubbling or something like hmm. this. So there's stuff like that as well, where I was like, where he's working in with yeah, like yeah. such small processes and some of his dronier stuff, because I know what it is. I have a little bit of an idea. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of an interesting situation because all of his stuff is sound generating. So all, I think always, almost afterwards when he plays, that would be like a little workshop yeah. where people are like, <laughs> right, so what does this do? Like, how did you make that? And he can yeah, sort yeah. of show like, because it's all physical. Yeah, I mean, in his case, it's a kind of a funky one because like he does have physical gestures, but they're almost curatorial. Yeah, like you, exactly. You, you plop it's the a little alpha seltzer in it and like yeah. then the, 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 the thing does its own thing. So the gesture, the intention is legible but the like per sound moment and event, he's not in there making the bubbles happen. Exactly, you know, like yeah. it's a, it's kind of a, a macro gestural thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which would be very different to I imagine like listening purely to like a recording of a performance of his. Yeah. Like where you disc completely divorced. It would be interesting as well, but in a different way. Yeah. And yeah, that it yeah. would then become more about like what is the nature of these sounds, which you do get when you watch them live, but like when you see someone moving around and doing stuff, there's like a. A sort of a structural and like a, 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 a yeah an orchestrational thing like that he's getting up and he's moving and he's doing this thing now like you mm. sort of attach the human performing mm. um, and then you swim in the sound as well but like there's a, a, a sort of a theater isn't the right word but there's a, a, a yeah there's something that's physically happening that you're visually watching you know yeah it's that thing of when if there's someone there doing stuff you're like <laughs> you're drawn to them even if they're like <laughs> yeah yeah you know they're, they're, like you say you set something up and then mm. you're sort of overseeing what's happening mm. like for the next few minutes before adding <laughs> something else it is like you say that element of like we've come to this place to watch someone and now we're gonna like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna get my eyeful's worth you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I want to see them doing stuff <laughs> yeah well that being said I often close my eyes at gigs too like I, I right yeah yeah it depends yeah it depends definitely. on the, the, the it depends artist, on the thing yeah. doesn't it yeah no, that's right, actually. There was a thing I was at, a more sort of droney thing, where for like, yeah, like the first few minutes of one set, I was like, no, I'm not having this. Then I was like, I'll shut my eyes and like do the, sit my eyes and like do some of my like meditation breathing, right. like nine in and out, six in and out, three in and out. And I was like, yeah, this is now amazing. Yeah, so yeah. I've got my eyes shut and I'm like just here, like letting the drones like watch. Yeah, that sounds more like conscientious ob objection. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a, a buddy of mine, well, a, a guy that, that was doing his, his uh, studies while I was doing mine, he wrote a series of pieces for, I think they were called Concert Relief, where right. while you were at a concert, if the music you found to be disenjoyable, there was like all these things you could do, like, you know, you could do that scritchy thing in your ear, and like, right. there were these sort of like pieces you could perform on top of other people's pieces nice. just to keep yourself entertained, <laughs> yeah. you know? That's great, yeah. <laughs> like an art equivalent. A little pack of cards out. or something, yeah, like, yeah I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cool. Shall we Great. play a little more? Yeah, let's. Mm -hmm. 
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.